Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So I've bought myself a new airbrush and it's a little bit different to ones that you normally see on sale in the UK. So I thought I'd do a little video about it. It's a Tamiya Spraywork HG wide airbrush trigger type with a half a millimeter nozzle. So I've brought this across from Japan. They're not commonly available in the UK, um, but it does share a few similarities with some brushes that you can get in the UK. And at the same time, I've also got hold of Tamiya's own Spraywork airbrush stand, which is designed to hold this kind of airbrush as well as a more conventional one. And also got the uh, airbrush cleaning kit that Tamiya offer, which I hadn't seen before. Plan is to uh, have a little look at what's inside the box and then try and do a little bit of a paint demonstration with it. So let's start off by taking a look at the brush. As ever with Tamiya, really lovely packaging that it comes in. Um, always as much of the pleasure with Tamiya is opening them up and, uh, and enjoying the experience of actually owning it as well as actually uh, using it day to day. Um, some stuff on the back here, lots of Japanese because it's mostly sold in the Japanese market, just about various ways of uh, operating the brush. I'll be using it with my own compressor, which is not a Tamiya brand one, um, but there shouldn't be any problems with the connections. So we'll just open up the side here. So a little bit of context, the reason I've bought uh, this brush is that I was looking for a trigger type brush. Now I do have another airbrush. It's a Chinese brand called Feng Da. Uh, nothing wrong with the brush, but it's a traditional a dual action brush with a, a button lever on the top there. And I just find it a little bit awkward. I've got large hands and um, various reasons. Like I'm just not always 100% confident in the use of that button on the top. So I thought I'd try something different. This is the trigger type, it is just a single uh, action for doing the air and then the paint coming out at the same time rather than having to do two separate movements. Um, one other benefit of this particular Tamiya brush is that it comes with a grip handle as well so it's a bit better for people with, with larger hands um, than the, the standard brush where you're balancing it like a pen. So I'm um, looking forward to using it like that. If it looks familiar my understanding is that this brush comes from the same factory that makes the Iwata brand brushes. Uh, this grip is familiar from certain Iwata brand brushes uh, and also the uh, Mr. Hobby brushes, the Pro Convoy brushes, uh, which are more widely available in the UK uh, and better value than the Iwata brushes. Uh, they also, I believe, come from the same factory um, with the Mr. Hobby Pro Convoy brushes. This plastic handle is actually an optional extra, so that's one of the reasons why I went for the Tamiya one. Um, although I believe that the Mr. Hobby half a millimeter needle version of this brush actually comes with two end caps. Uh, this just comes with a traditional uh, end cap to do a round uh, paint pattern, um, but the Mr. Hobby uh, version also comes with an alternative end cap that allows you to do a, a fan pattern. So anyway, first impressions, uh, quality very nice. It's got a decent weight to it in the hand. The paint cup is separate. So we'll have a look at the paint cup here. Uh, it says on the box, this is a 15 milliliter paint cup with a cap on it, uh, pops off like that. And uh, something else in here, what's this? Oh yeah, just the, the little spanner there for stripping down the uh, airbrush when you want to clean it with more detail and looks like that's been embossed with uh, the Tamiya logo as well. Take a quick look at the instruction manual. Again, lots of Japanese. Um, I'm not going to read this out now. Uh, some information there on bolting it together. Um, some more information there about hanging it on the side of the spray work and connecting the hose. Uh, some information there about removing the handle, I assume, if you want to. Uh, some information there about thinning. Uh, my plan is to probably use some Tamiya acrylics for the sample painting a bit later on. Uh, some tips here on thinning as well. Again, as you'd expect with Tamiya, um, really thorough uh, information on, on making best use of the tool. Actually, I'll find this useful myself because there's definitely going to be some stuff here that I hadn't seen previously. So I'll uh, have a good look at this when I have the opportunity. Um, but that's, as ever, good attention to detail from Tamiya. And that more or less covers the unboxing of the Spraywork HG half a millimeter airbrush. Next up, a little look at the 
stand for the airbrush. So this is the uh, Spray Work Airbrush Stand 2. As you can see from the front there, it looks like it's designed to hold two different styles of airbrush. It's got a pipette there. It's got some little slots that you can put some paint pots in. Uh, there's some description there about how you can get different sizes of airbrush in there. Uh, traditional dual action without the handle on the left. Uh, dual action with a handle rather like the one that I've bought, the trigger type. Uh, and then on the right, I think that's the uh, bulky plastic uh, airbrush that comes as standard with the uh, Tamiya spray work kits. Um, again, broadly speaking, Tamiya spray work airbrush is not widely available in the UK, um, although you can get a few of the other parts here. Um, the UK importer doesn't doesn't bring everything in from Tamiya. Tends to pick and choose what they think is going to be of interest in the UK market. Okay, out of the box it comes. It is actually much lighter than I expected. Get the brush. Pop the little cap on it, and in theory, this one goes in and sits quite happily like that. And you can see there's a little slot just in the bottom, and uh, a nice little cushion there for the handle. So that does seem to work quite well. So I'll just take a slightly more detailed look at the brush, uh, starting with the handle here. It looks like if you wanted to remove it, this nut would unscrew here. You can slide it off and they needed a different spanner to remove the extension piece. So if you wanted to use it more like a traditional uh, short standard airbrush, you could do. Uh, this is a standard fitting. Um, as with many dual action brushes, you've got this uh, flow adjustment uh, screw here, which basically is a, a limiter on how far the trigger can go. So I've already adjusted it here by unscrewing to mean that the trigger can go all the way back for the maximum paint flow. If you wanted to restrict the amount you just tighten that screw in and as you can see there's not so much movement on the trigger but I'm probably going to want to have the option of maximum paint flow so I'll leave it like that. Um, on the uh, cleaning aspect um, normally what I just do is I run uh, thinner through it during the course of the day uh, using the back pressure to kind of um, churn the the paint and thinner around inside and then and then rinsing out with cotton buds and paper towel and so on. Um, but at the end of the day, if you want to access the needle, you do so by unscrewing uh, this piece at the back, which looks like it's plastic, but actually it's hybrid, it's metal on the inside. I think it might actually be entirely brass. Uh, this is where the needle is held in place. You just undo this screw here uh, and you can pull the needle out. Uh, well, I might as well take it all the way out. There we go. That is the 0.5 millimeter needle, as we've said before, uh, very carefully put that back in. Very important to not damage your needle by being silly uh, when you're doing cleaning on an airbrush. It's the most important thing, that fit between the needle and the nozzle. Okay, so that's in place. And yes, uh, at the other end, the nozzle, you've got these two parts here over the nozzle, uh, which are just knurled and should only be done hand tight. And there's the second one there. Sometimes you can paint without the front one um, if you're confident that you're not going to bash the needle into anything. But hopefully we can see the needle sticking out. And when you pull the trigger, the needle goes away. Uh, and the nozzle, again, it's all very, very tiny, but the nozzle is a screw fitting on this one. And that's where this tiny little wrench comes in. And you just uh, put it across the flats here uh, and you can then loosen that. I won't loosen it fully, but then you can do that. Uh, loosen the nozzle out if you need to for a, a deeper clean. Um, and the instructions does have all the parts for a full tear down if you want to do that. And that's where this uh, airbrush cleaning kit might come in useful uh, with a couple of brushes, a small one and a big one, and a couple of different uh, greases here uh, designed to make sure that the O-rings inside the airbrush are kept in tip-top condition. Um, probably won't need to use that every time, but it's, it's good to have it there um, so that you can keep the airbrush in uh, the best condition over the many years that you hope it's going to be useful for. Okay, so we're all ready to go now with some paint tests. I've got the compressor set to 20 PSI to start off with, and I've got some Tamiya Semi-Gloss Black Acrylic X18 here that's already been thinned for airbrushing. Uh, I'm gonna use a, a pipette to put a little bit in the paint cup, and we'll see what we can do with a, a few little tests with a uh, smaller amount of spray, and then go to some, some larger spraying. First time I've used the trigger airbrush, so let's see how this goes. There we go, so the air comes out to about here, 
and then the paint comes out there. And we can go for some bigger circles as we squeeze harder. Who's that? That's almost at the full trigger there. That's the full trigger. So that gives you an idea of just from squeezing the trigger a different amount, the coverage you can get. We should also be going quite close. Do some bit of dusting. Uh, we should also be able to do some fairly large coats of coverage, and that's really what this brush is designed for, especially on uh, model car bodies. And even though it's only on paper, that is a really good bit of coverage. Let's bring that a bit close to the camera so you can see what we've managed to do. Okay, so basically I'm actually really pleased with that straight away. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what else I'd want to do with this. I mean, it's just... Okay, time for a little clean up now. So I've got some of the black paint, it's dribbled down the side and I've tipped the excess back into the pot. So we'll grab a little bit of our X20A thinner. Uh, you can't really clean up the Tamiya acrylics with water because it's more of an alcohol base. Water soluble, not water cleanable is the way to describe it. Um, quite a lot of uh, thinner in there, you can't really see because it's black. Um, cover my finger over the end here and we'll just do the older bubbling trick just to get the back pressure through here. There we go, and let's spray that through. Okay, use the uh, cotton bud next. Just uh, swirl around on the inside there with the cotton bud. Okay, so first time using the brush, uh, made a bit more of a mess than expected when putting the paint in and trying to clean it, but that's part of the experience. Um, but this is ready to use with another color now. Uh, and I have to say, very, very pleased with the quality of the spray. Um, I'm far from the best airbrusher. I'm certainly not an artist, but uh, just the level of, uh, of detail and precision that you can get with this uh, single trigger action is, is really fantastic. And look forward to using this uh, with some proper painting in a moment. Last little test is to paint some real pieces. Uh, so I've already thinned down some Tamiya acrylic buff, XF57. Uh, managed to use the trick where you see it dropping off the stirrer. Uh, and I've got a couple of chairs here that are gonna go into the Tamiya Lotus Europa kit. Uh, so let's see how these, these get sprayed. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in a bit closer so that we have a better view of the spraying process. Okay, just starting to get a bit of a sheen on this. Uh, looks like it's pretty well coated. Let's have a go with the second one. So again, pretty good coverage on that. Um, airbrush is doing a good job. So overall, very pleased with this airbrush. Uh, look forward to using it more in the future. Uh, good deal as well, despite having to bring it across from Japan. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you've got any questions or comments, please do leave them below. Uh, please do give me a like or a subscribe if you've enjoyed the channel. Uh, otherwise, thanks very much for watching.